What is my responsibility? What am I supposed to deliver? What is it that God expects me to do as a child of God as long as I am living today? Praise be to God. These are some of the questions when we sit down and ask ourselves without even waiting anybody to come and ask us. When we have our own time and you sit down, you think, you ask yourself questions. Why was I created by God? Am I really doing what I'm expected to do today? If Jehovah God was to come today and ask me for the time that I'm allowed to be in this world, what have you been able to do? Praise be to God. One has still. You see, today, we have some questions to answer you and me as individual if we are really going to understand our existence in this world. Five questions that we, all of us, need to ask ourselves. And today, whether you are poor and whether you are rich, everybody is asking, is fighting to answer these questions. Everybody is fighting to answer these questions. Those people who consider themselves to be very well, those people who consider themselves, if they are, to be very poor, everybody is trying to answer these five questions. And if you are writing, I want you to understand and highlight this. It is going to help you. And even when you sit down as an individual, and when you have time with God, when you have time for yourself, that period when we call quiet time, you and God having time to discuss, having time to evaluate yourself, having time to think about your life, ask yourself these five questions. And the moment you ask yourself and you get an answer, brethren, we will have taken as my father and you'll have been able to understand why, what is the reason for my existence today? What am I supposed to do? Have I been able to deliver what God wants me to deliver? When you ask yourself the first question, who am I? What does it feel? Who am I? When you understand who you are today, you will be able to know the reason for your existence today. That is number one. When you ask yourself, where am I from? And the second question, where am I from? I'm going to talk about it more in details because it is another question that many people ask themselves and at the same time it intimidates you depending on where you came from. Praise be to God. Question number three. Why am I here? Why am I where I am today? Question number four, what can I do? And question number five, where am I going? When we ask ourselves these five questions and we try to find an answer to this, then we will be in a position to understand the meaning of our existence today. And why God has given us an opportunity to be alive today. As I say, there are so many people today, from wherever they are, if God was to give them an opportunity to be alive today, brethren, they could do a lot for the Lord. Because they know there is a reason as to why every one of us, God has given us a reason to live today. But as a as a young person, this is the question that we need to ask ourselves. Why? Who am I? Why? What has God, why, why is it that God has given me an opportunity to be alive today? Where have I come from? Where am I going? Why I, am I? What, what, what is it that I am, where I am, I, am, I am today? These are some of the questions. If we get an answer to this, brethren, we will have God as step my father as we continue seeking the face of the Lord. Praise be to God. What are still? Open with me the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Romans 8 verse 28. If 
Your dad say amen. Great. And we know that God causes everything to work for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Praise be to God. And we know that God caused everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to the purpose, to his purpose for them. You see, brethren, today, there is as to why many of us will miss some of the most important things in our lives that God has for us in store. It is not because we don't qualify to get them. But it is because we have not really understood the reason for our existence today. You see, the greatest tragedy one of the greatest tragedies in life is for somebody who is living a life without a purpose. That is one of the greatest tragedies. I don't know which other tragedy that we may say that we have in life, mostly for us who are the children of God. But the greatest tragedy is life without a purpose. If you're just living and you don't have a purpose, that is one of the greatest tragedies that any person who is a child of God is going through today. If there is something that I knew when I was at the age of 24 is when I said I don't want to live a life without a purpose. And I told myself I don't want to live just because I'm able to breathe, or God has given me an opportunity to live. I want to make sure that I live not just, not, not like anybody else, but I have my own way of living according to this word of God. What a still. The moment you understand this, brethren, you see, today, where is it that we are still finding? in the house of God. Who are still sinners. And that thing don't haunt them anymore. Why? Why is it that today we are still having people who faithfully comes and stand in the altar Holy and they know what they have done in the course of the week. Then they come to repent in the altar. Why? These are people who really don't understand why they exist. That is point number one. Those are people who really don't understand the reason as to why God has called all of us to live a holy life. These are people whom their conscience died a long time ago. And when your conscience dies, brethren, you just live. You don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're coming from. And you really don't understand who you are. These are the kind of people that at the end of the day, unless God's grace and God who is so merciful intervenes in their lives. They live a very desperate life. And I feel so bad when we the children of God, instead of taking this and doing things and showing the world the way, it gets to a point whereby we get lost along the way. 
and we find ourselves that we have now started following the things of the world. And completely we forget and we don't understand why we exist in this life. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. We ought to show the world the way. We ought to show the, the, the world which directions to follow. We ought to be totally different from the people of this world and show them the way. Praise be to God. Bwana Sikiwe. You see, today, without a purpose, life has no meaning. As a child of God, if you don't have a purpose as to why you are living today, the life that you are living has no meaning. And my prayer to God today is that even as we pursue what is our purpose in life, we shall do it so faithfully that God who is so merciful and so faithful will help us get back on track as we understand why we exist today. Praise be to God. You see, there's some things that in life that are predictable. And you know that, and I know that. Things like success, success is something that is predictable. You can predict whether you'll be successful or whether you're not going to be successful. For me, I can predict success because there are some things that I work hard diligently in accordance to this word of God and you cannot tell me that I'm not going to be successful because I know and the Spirit of God will help me and you to understand and to predict where the success is. God has given Praise be to God. You see, things like success, there are so many people today who think that success is luck. It is not that way. It is not that way. Success is something that is designated to be by God to be predictable. The moment you understand the reason of your existence today, there's some things that you'll be able to predict in your life because you know who you are. You understand why God has created you today. You will understand what you are supposed to have today. And that will help you to predict the things that will come in your life because you understand who you are and why God created you. God has still. But let's was still. You see, children of God, my prayer to all of us today is that we get to that point whereby when God looks at us from heaven, he will see people who have a hunger for him. He will see people who really understand who they are. Sometimes I feel for God because for all of us, when He is led to release major blessings to us, He finds people who lost direction a long time ago and we took our own way. And for that cycle to go back again, for God now to release that, that those blessings again to our lives. It takes time. And sometimes I ask myself, why do we struggle so much as the children of God? Who are so faithful in the house of God? And when I was asking God some of these questions, what I could feel in my spirit is that we most of the time lose track around the way. And when we have prayed faithfully, waiting upon the Lord, by the time those that grace is there and God is about to release those blessings to us. Many of us lose focus and divert and go start doing other things. My prayer to us as children of God, youth of this church, let it ignite the fire of God in this place by really understanding who we are. We really need to understand who we are. It is not anywhere, brethren, in the word of God, for us to remain the same forever. God wants us to rise from one glory to the other. And that can only happen when we really know actually who we are, why, what is my relationship with God. Let us not be a one day born again Christian. Today we are born again, tomorrow we are somewhere else. Where nobody is seeing me 
I'm only so good when I come to the house of God. You see, these are some of the things that many people don't want to talk because they say when they talk, but to give up. But brethren, let's stand for the truth. What will set us free is the truth. Not pampering some, some mistakes and tuning them to look like truth. That will not help us. Instead, what will happen is that that thing will really push us away from God days, as days continue by. But when we stand for the truth, brethren, we will look at you and say, actually, this person knows who, who he is. He understands why he, is, he exists today. And nobody will try to manipulate you, brethren. Nobody will try to show you that you can be this, whereas you cannot be like this. Because you understand, you know your ground. You know who you are. You don't understand your relationship with God. Praise be to God. And these are the people. See, even as I say, my father, I don't know who is going to say this. I don't know who is going to say this. I don't know who is going to say this. I don't know who is going to say this. I don't know who is going to say this. Why is it hard to put a card in the father and his cards in the mood? Amen. Had to tell you this. I don't know who is going to say this. I don't know who is going to say this. where they came from. Because of your family backgrounds. And you say, this is who we are. And I really don't understand how we can change this. How I don't know how we can change this. Brethren, don't be bound by the things of the past. Don't be bound by the fact that you came from a family where people never gave their life to Christ seriously. Don't be bound by the things whereby you say, I come from a very poor background. That's, uh, that's our lifestyle. That's who we are. There's nothing that you can do about it. Yes, there's something that you can do. Listen, why you are a child of God? The Bible says that the old is gone and the new thing has come. What is this new thing? If you're going to live the same kind of life any, anybody and everybody else has lived, you really don't understand where you exist, brethren. It is very, very dangerous. And these are some of the things that are making many of us who are Christian, children of God, struggle when we are still in the house of God. Brethren, my prayer to you and to me today is that we shall live a different kind of life. The life that will glorify the Father. And the life that when God looks at us, He sees people who understand who they are. Buona esos hijos. Buona esos You see, I don't know how to put it, but God will help us. I, I, I've been having a, a burden to pray for many people, don't want to mention names. And I know God who is faithful, who is faithful, who understands who we can, the kind of a people that we are supposed to be will help all of us. One of my biggest burden is to pray for the youth of this church. I cannot tell you why, but I have that burden, which I have decided to take it upon myself to do it. But as you, I understand some of the, the challenges that we go through as youth, but let me tell you, you can be a youth and you still can walk through this journey of salvation, holy and stand before the Lord and be counted one person who has lived a whole life during the tenure of your youth. Praise be to God. It is very, very possible. It is not a must that you have to compromise today and tomorrow, tomorrow come back to salvation. It is not like that. God is never happy with such kind of life. Youth of this church, let's walk as we understand. Let's walk this journey of salvation as we understand who we are. Let's choose to be Christians Born again children of God from Monday to Sunday, from first to thirty first, from January to December. Let purpose to walk and live a holy life. Praise be to God. Let purpose to understand why we exist today. It is not a mistake. There is a reason as to why God has given us an opportunity to live at the youth of this church. Says that we should never be yoked with unbelievers, correct? For what relationship do light 
and darkness has to do. Leo hii ukichukua mafuta na ma, na maji jaribu kuchanganya jamii. Isha hii hizi vitu bila hazijai pekana. That is the truth. And when you choose to walk a holy life, a life that pleases God, then that's purpose to do that. By the way, me I surely feel so bad. Na na wafiliano wa wengine, unasikia mtu anasema I really feel for you. I really feel for those people. You want you you want to be in charge. And at the same time you want to understand what the, what is happening in the world. You see what happens at the end of the day, you lose both. You lose the good, the good things of the house of God and at the same time you lose those things that people call good good out there. And you we because you really don't understand yourself. I want us to get to that place whereby we understand who we are. I want us even as God looks from heaven he sees people who are after his own heart people who understand why they exist today brethren we have a mandate we have a responsibility huge responsibility what as people 